think it was just about two years ago, Cisco rolls out intent-based networking along with the foundational architecture to support that software-defined access. Now, two big crucial elements that only Cisco was able to do, the UADP ASIC as well as the consistent operating system iOS XE. Consistency is definitely the idea, and across the entire multifamily line, we have seen this, the same chip, the same binaries, the same release schedules, all that has been part of the Catalyst 9000 family, which started off with the 9300 stackable access switch, replacing the 3650 and 3850, the 9400 modular access switch for the campus, took on the 4500 line, and then the 9500 40 gig optimized, taking on the 4500X. Then in 2018, not that long ago, we rolled out the 9200, no big surprise, taking out 2960 XXR series, and then a big surprise, the 9800, which is where we took AirOS, now put it on iOS XE, because we're talking wired wireless access throughout the entire line. But now in 2019, the only thing not touched up to this point was a campus, or the, the core part of the network. So for today's show, we get to look at closely the Catalyst 9600 for the campus and the core. Muhammad Imam is back to join us in the lab and get all the details on this guy right here. But for now, let's go to the lounge and check in with Hamanchu. All right, Hamanchu, welcome to TechWise TV. It's good to have you back. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, it's been a bit of time. Here. Yeah, we've done we've done a, some stuff on digital building and some other things I think in the past, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. I it's been that. a little bit too long. So I'm glad to have you back. And you've got big announcements to be made now. Yes, we do. This is huge. So uh, I'll let you do the honors, but it's a new 9600, the Catalyst 9600. Can you tell me what that is? Where does it fit? And how does it change things? So Rob, if you remember, we launched the entire Catalyst 9000 line a year and a half ago. Yeah. You know, it was the Almost foundation years, of yeah. our uh, intent-based networking strategy, right? We launched the 93, 94, 95. We came back and launched the 92 last year. Right. But you know, one thing was missing. There was one more thing needed to refresh the entire portfolio. And so then I'm proud to announce that we are launching the 9600 today. That's going to be our next gen modular core platform for the campus. Wow. Well, so let's be real clear here. This is a, um, I always regret saying replacement because this is a, we're talking about some very valuable products, but they've been around a long time and continually improved. We're talking about the Cat 6K family. How much, uh, obviously we have some legacy here that we're carrying on um, in the core of the network. Uh, so this is a core focused switch. Is that is that what we're focused here? It, it is It is a core focused switch. And uh, you know, the core is a very, very important area of any network okay. it's the backbone you're right right so if the core is down the entire network is down uh, there'll be there'll be no wireless there'll be no wired if the core is down so a core switch needs to be resilient it needs to okay. support high availability okay. yeah right uh, you, to your point about cat 6k with yeah. the cat 6k we it caught cat 6k was the gold standard for campus core oh, absolutely. right we build that so it supported all the features that you ever need on a campus mm -hmm. like 20 years of innovation yep. and it supported resiliency and high availability with the 9600, we are carrying forward that, and we are raising the bar on that, really. Okay. Right? We, we support all the CAT 6K features, okay. right? bring that innovation right okay. on 9600, but then we are raising the bar with intent-based networking and some of the other innovations that we brought. Yeah, as we go through some of these features, I am kind of curious about you know, what really does need to be different um, you know, in terms of why someone would be looking at making a change to 96. If things are humming along in their core you know, with, a, with another 6K platform, where are they looking at the differences? And first, I wonder about this notion of we've got different roles in terms of architecture that are being played now as well. Where does the 96 fit in terms of how customers are actually deploying these products? Let me answer that in a bit. Uh, going back to the CAT 6K portion, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, with, the, with the 9600, we, we've taken leaps and bounds in performance. Okay. The 9600 is a 25 terabit chassis, yep. right? It can do 40 gig, 100 gig, 25 gig, et cetera and I think we'll get into the technical details in a little bit. Yep. Uh, so we, we, we do all of that, but then it's purpose-built for the campus, unlike a, some of our uh, competitors that okay. leverage switches from, say, other parts of the network. Okay. This is purpose-built for the campus, so okay. it supports scale and resiliency needed for the campus. Okay. Right? It has integrated security, and we are taking, uh, we have MaxSec security, we have flexible net flow. These remain huge, huge competitive right. differentiators for us. Okay. Right? And uh, we are continuing to build on that. The other important point, point that you brought up, right? Uh, the core, a core switch can have multiple roles. Okay. Right. Uh, the CAT 6K, for instance, supported the L3 core, but then it also supported okay. uh, MPLS for a provider edge uh, part right. of the network. With the 9600, we can support those two roles, but then we can also support the SDA border. If, okay. you, if you remember, we launched software-defined yeah. access, Same right? Same time we launched those first set of uh, uh, 9,000 switches. Right. Right, okay. So with the 9600, we can support three roles in a campus core. Okay. 
for a customer, that means that you standardize across those three roles and leads to you know lower cost of investment, lower right. DCO, et cetera. Yeah, because I think there are some customers who are still very much in a certain architecture they're comfortable with, but they're looking perhaps at what we're doing with intent-based networking and what we can do with a software-defined access, and they're saying, well, how do I migrate, and I don't want to make any purchases that prohibit me from taking advantage of that, and you're saying, no, this is a platform that's with a single platform you're able to then go in any direction you need. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. You okay. standardize on one platform and not just on one platform for the core. If you look at the other 9Ks, uh, Catalyst 9600 has the same ASIC, the same operating system oh. as those other platforms. So cu a customer can standardize for their campus. And I like that because actually, and that was a promise we made almost two years ago, a year and a half, and the notion was it was that we, this is a big move for Cisco because we've had everything from, you know, the CAT 2Ks, 3Ks, 4Ks, 6Ks, and this type of thing, and each one might be on a slightly different software train and a slightly different uh, release schedule and things like this, and it, it's worked well for, for its time, but now we've got a family that's saying, hey, we've got the exact same all the way down to the binary level. Uh, so that releases are now coming out more consistently, the uh, uh, features and the access and everything you do with them is also more consistent, I would assume, as well. Absolutely, right? So it's the same binary image, as you said, for all of these, nice. all, all the CAT 9Ks. Okay. I was talking to, the, to a customer the other day, they've standardized on 94 and 95, and they're excited about 96 coming out, Can because that now they, that, that, that standardization of the 96 is much easier for them. Excellent, right? excellent. Huge savings, huge savings for our customers. So when it comes to migrating, uh, how prepared are we for migrating you know, customers who are already in the 6K line? Is this, what kind of a situation is that? So we ran extensive tests with a lot of okay. our customers pre-launch, yep. right? Um, 50 plus customers have tested this, very large enterprises have tested this, and I think we've got great feedback so far. The, the box is ready to migrate, mm -hmm. right? I think there are two things I'll touch upon there. One. Um, we, we have all the CAT 6K feature sets you know, that we mentioned, the layer right. two, layer three services, the security, integrated security, but then we've, we've, we've added a lot more features, uh, software defined access, right. a analytics and uh, insights okay. capabilities. We've added uh, things like uh, ETA. Oh, encrypted, encrypted threat in, analytics. In, encrypted yeah. threat analytics. We've added, analysis, I always get that one mixed up, but yeah. Uh, we've added programmability. And uh, you know, a lot of our competitors talk about programmability at the OS layer. Right. I think one thing I want to touch upon is that we've, Cisco's got programmability not just at the OS, but on the ASIC, on the OS, and on the controller DNA center. So we've got programmability everywhere. Nice, okay, so that you, so anybody that's moved in that direction is looking to automate more of what they're doing or, or continue, then this is, not, this is gonna fit right into that, that scheme as well. Uh, as they go into it, some whatever tool set they're using, absolutely. same access and absolutely. that type of thing. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm kind of curious if um, uh, how you might highlight where people are going to save. Well, you know, we're always asking someone to invest in a new platform and such like this. And what kind of things do we look at where this is going to make a difference in someone's network from a cost perspective? Right, that's a good point. So uh, uh, let's see why people are uh, looking for those higher speeds. Right, uh, th there's a huge, th there's a lot of data coming into the network. Mm -hmm. Wireless is bringing in a lot of data. On the access switches, we are migrating from one gig to M gig, right? A lot, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of our customers are adopting M gig. As the access switches migrate to higher speeds, right. customers need higher speeds in aggregation and core. Yep. Uh, Cisco provides. Cisco is the only vendor to provide multi-rate 10, 25 gig optics. So it gives our customers a very easy migration path without changing any fiber optic cables to go from 10 gig to 25 gig. Again, Cisco is the oh, only nice. vendor who does that. So for, for, from a customer perspective they can uh, they uh, they can deploy that 10 25 gig optic right. and be ready for that 25 gig speed so oh, wow so you got a right. nice path to to go at your own speed through that copper plant and then when you're ready for the fiber as well we've got those cards and we go all the way up to 50 gig i believe even on some of these cards yeah we can yeah. you know with with a, with a small upgrade of the supervisor we can go up to higher um, higher speeds as well and uh, the, the same box supports not just 10 25 but supports 40 100 gig as well right so it's it's a standard box okay. for that notion yeah so before i jump over to the lab here and a, a final question to just understand from your perspective what's most important to remember what do you want everybody to understand about this new platform the new platform is a member of the catalyst 9000 it supports yeah, all those awesome features yeah. and it supports the rich heritage of cat 6k is ready for that migration if customers are looking for that so give nothing up there's still plenty more to go right. and we're ready for the future because right. it's 20 years on that previous platform. This one's got a lot yep. of big shoes to fill. Bringing in think, that innovation here. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate you joining Appreciate me. It, I'm gonna yeah. go check in the lab. All right. All right guys. Muhammad, how are you doing? Hey, Rob. Hey. How are you? So, wow, this, right here on the desk in front of us, this is the, the successor. This is what you've been waiting to show us, yeah? 
Absolutely. CAT 6K has been the gold standard for the campus core for decades. You're right. This is a and long we time are, coming. And we are taking this gold standard and modernizing it. And that's what we have as Catalyst 9600. Okay, so it's noticeably smaller than what we're used to seeing, um, but I, I don't want to take you off your uh, pace here, so walk us through. What do, what do we need to understand Absolutely, about Absolutely, you're different? right. This is smaller. Mm -hmm. It's only 17 inches in depth. Okay. Very unlike some of the other core devices that we have seen in the industry. Um, it's a modular chassis, right? And we have a very simple but very powerful and resilient architecture here. Okay. We have changed the architecture from the CAT 6K, if you remember. Right. Um, the architecture that we have here, of course, it's a modular chassis. It consists of a chassis. Right. It consists of some other modular components like fan tray and power supplies. But the most important component here is the supervisor. Of course, right? the brains. The supervisor is coming with a centralized architecture, which okay. means all of the processing that you have to do is happening on the supervisor. There is not any intelligence on the line card which makes it transparent, which makes it fast, higher MTBF, hmm. and a lot of different advantages we get with this simple architecture. Okay. Now this chassis is capable of 25.6 terabits per second. Okay, wow. That's a lot of bandwidth that yeah. this chassis is capable of. Now, the supervisor that we are introducing, SOUP1, is capable of 9.6 terabits per second. Okay. And it gives 3.2 terabits per second capability on each of the line card slot. Okay. With the new supervisor that we are introducing, you can go up to 2.4 terabits per second on each of the line cards. Okay. Now we have simplified everything. Okay. The line cards that we are introducing is just two. And those two line cards are going to support the speeds from one all the way to 100 gig. Okay. Oh, nice, okay. We have a line card, and let me show you here. Mm -hmm. This is the 40 gig and 100 gig line card. Very simple architecture, you don't see any kind of ASICs or even a stub ASICs here, mm -hmm. and that makes it very, very simple. We also have the 10 gig and 25 gig line card, okay. which is down here, let me pull this out here. Um, this one has one gig speed, 10 gig speed, and 25 gig speed. Okay. And this is a same very simple architecture, there's not much in here. Uh, no stub ASIC, it just connects to a passive backplane in the ASIC, in the chassis here. Okay, okay. Okay? Now, this also comes with the fan tray. You remember the fan tray in the Catalyst 9400? Yeah. Which can be serviced from both sides, from the right. front as well as the back. It, this has the same capability. Okay. Right? And it comes with four modular power supplies and the power supply is also coming in a very compact form factor okay. and gives you enough power uh, with redundancy okay. to run the chassis. When we built the Catalyst 9600, we built it ground up for high availability and resiliency. Core of the network is super important for our customers. Certainly. right? Yep. Our entire network relies on the core and that means our entire businesses rely on the core as well. Okay. And so we have kept in mind the high availability and resiliency on every single step during the development of the Catalyst 9600, both from the software perspective, right. from the hardware perspective, but also from the network and protocols perspective. Okay. Now the Catalyst 9600 is, build, is based on the same foundational elements that we have in the rest of the Catalyst 9K family. Oh, okay. So that is based on the UADP 3.0 right. as the ASIC. Okay. The supervisor that we have has three ASICs. So let me pull one of the supervisors. The supervisor has three ASICs here, which is up here and a CPU. Okay. It's, um, it's a very powerful ASIC as we have seen with the rest of the Catalyst 9K right. family. And with three of them, it extends it to 9.6 terabits per second. But from software perspective, this is based on iOS XC. 
Okay, that, that, so this is the fascinating part to me is that you guys have maintained, you promised two years ago that everything was gonna follow this train. Same ASIC, same operating system. Therefore, now everything becomes much more streamlined in terms of releases and updates. It's across the entire line. Theoretically, they may start coming out faster if they haven't already because now all the investment is going into these new platforms. So we're seeing that, that promise lived out here as well. Great point. In fact, the iOS XC release that we are running on the rest of the Catalyst 9K family is extending here. In fact, the binary file that we run on the rest of the Cat 9K family runs here as well. So, so you just need binaries. one file. Yeah, oh, that's very and nice. And run it across your network, that right there including the core. A lot of confusion eliminated right there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now this, this uh, supervisor is also based on an x86 based CPU and you know the benefits of x86 based CPU mm -hmm. which enables us to run application hosting, different applications that you can run on the Cat 9K, now you can run it on the Catalyst 9600 as well. Excellent, flexibility there, okay. From high availability perspective, um, we are bringing ISSU on this box, oh, which was nice. not the case on the Cat 6K. It right. used to have the EFSU, I think. Yeah. Okay. right, which is still used to take some time. So right. you need to have some downtime if you want to upgrade the box. Okay. But core of the campus and core of the network is so important. You can't uh, deal with any downtime they for cannot. any upgrades whatsoever. That's so you've right. got the in-service software upgrade now for this platform. Absolutely. I believe you rolled that out with the 9500 as well, right? With the 9500 across the two units with okay. the Stackwise Virtual here within the chassis nice. across the two supervisors. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, oh wow. Okay. And 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 that means minimal downtime. In fact, we have minimized the downtime to less than five millisecond. <laughs> right. Okay. We have that's never heard of. All right. Um, we also have features like GIR, where you can uh, take one of these Catalyst 9600s out of the network gracefully, so you can do any maintenance if required, and then put it back gracefully. Okay. Um, this is going to support Stackwise Virtual, okay. which is a similar technology as VSS. Right. Um, this has hot patching available here as well, okay. right? like the rest of the family, which means for quick fixes, for security vulnerabilities, you can just apply that patch without any downtime. It's a hot patch, <laughs> you just apply it, the system keeps running and you get the update. It reminds me of like a Terminator movie. You can't kill this. <laughs> you cannot kill this thing. That's you guys have thought of every different way in which they might happen. Okay. Absolutely. Let me also tell you a few things on, from security perspective. Okay. This comes with built-in 256 MacSec. Oh, very nice. It comes with all those great features that we have on trustworthy systems. Okay. We have it here, which means the hardware is resilient, the software cannot be tampered, Mm -hmm. and we have all kinds of security inbuilt in the hardware and the software. Nice, okay. Now, this box is coming after we have introduced the intent-based networking. Right. This is from day one doing intent-based networking. Okay, so it participates in that type of architecture as well for software-defined access? Absolutely. Okay. This can be used as the software-defined access border node okay. and control plane node, okay. right? Um, but more importantly, this box can be used for any type of deployments, right? Uh, which means whether you have a traditional deployment right. with L2, L3, L2, L3 boundary, whether you have uh, an MPLS core, whether you are going and modernizing your network with software-defined access and fabric-based solutions, you are covered. Right. The Catalyst 9600 supports all kinds of deployment. It can go in any type of campus core. And that's a good point not to overlook because I think in certain situations with non-Cisco uh, manufacturers, you may actually have to buy a completely separate box each time you're trying to do some different type of architectural layout. You're saying does not matter. So in case you start with one, but you're say you're changing your architecture, or if you're looking for consistency in multiple locations, you want one box you can deal with you can the board. standardize on one nice. box. You can use it in okay. multiple different deployments. Very nice. Okay. Right. And uh, and going forward, we are going to have more features and speeds. For example, we talked about one gig, ten gig, twenty-five gig. Yeah. What about 50? and fifty gig? Fifty gig? Yeah. Oh, you do. Okay. So fifty gig is going to come up on the same line card that we have here. Okay. The ten gig line card, that will be supported because the same form factor. We have simplified it. Yeah. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't depend on the switch. Right. It depends on what kind of optics oh, and fiber nice. you have. 
Well, now you have all fiber optics in this particular layout. Do we also support copper for those customers that Great are? Great question, okay. right? There are some customers who are still running copper right. or who wants to have copper connected to the core device. We are going to have an M gig line card, 48 oh, port. Nice. So there's in-based T support for doing multi-line rate, whichever Absolutely. you need to choose. Okay. Preserve you can run copper. it at one, 2.5, five, and 10 gig. Nice, okay. 48 port, line rate. Yeah, beautiful, okay. So this thing is prepared for a lot of different situations. It's prepared for high availability, prepared for security. Anything else that we need to focus on here? Because I'm, I'm in love already, but what else you got? Th th there are <laughs> a lot of things. I think you can go and yeah. look at the website. But remember, when business is depending on the core, right. you really need a Catalyst 9600 as the core device in your yeah. network. Well, I love the way the last couple of years you and I have been working together, you've taken the 9000 series and we've consistently uh, added in, working out from the edge in some situations. We had just done the 9200, it seems like, uh, months ago, just in 2018. And then, of course, now we've got the Aeronet line coming in with the 9800 and doing the wireless LAN controller. 9000 is the place to be. And the nice thing is the consistency all the way across the board, wired or wireless. You guys have got it going on. Thank you to your team for doing this. Thank you for being willing to bring this in and leave it with us here in the studio because I think this is going to help things run a lot smoother. <laughs> so I appreciate that. We'll talk more about that later. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Tons of details. We'll, of course, have the workshop going into even more detail here shortly. So be sure and look for that if you don't catch it live. But also check out our other shows. A lot of stuff coming out with launches recently within Cisco, including new access points. We talk about those changing edges. And we talk about the core of the network being able to support everything that's happening right now as things go out of control. No, not out of control but continue to grow. So join us. More shows coming on this kind of stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you on the next one.